Lord and welcome back to Grace and Fools. We are continuing our series on Know Your Sales. The next question that we have is, does the church believe in her immaculate conception? Mm. That's an interesting question. Um, for me to answer that question, I need to take you to somewhere else um, or to bring your attention to something else and then I would answer that question. If you read the Bible, uh, one of the characteristics of God which you will understand is He is very, very specific. Our God is not a God of weakness. He is very specific and He is detail-oriented. And He clearly says, right, um, even before you were born in the womb of your mother, I thought of you. Yeah. And He carefully knit you together. So He is very specific. He takes care of the details. Um, and He is detail-oriented. Um, so a uh, classic case in point is Noah's Ark. When Noah was called to the commission to build the ark, God gave the instructions of how much it should be in everything to the T, and Noah built it in accordance. Yeah. Um, so uh, God, if he had to bring uh, mankind and animals uh, to safety, he was very specific about it. Now I want you to bring your attention to the ark of the covenant. Imagine how much more specific he would be to, uh, or detailed oriented, he would be to build the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. I want to give you an uh, exercise. If you're truly interested in this question, uh, please go ahead and read Exodus chapter 25, verses 10 to 31. Because of the longevity of the message, I'm just going to give the crux of what it talks about. When the Ark of the Covenant was built, God was very specific. He says what kind of wood he wants. He says, I build it in Akasha wood and make it out of pure gold. And the length and the width, it says it has to be two and a half uh, cubic Great meter, cubic meter uh, in length and how long it should be, one and a half cubic in wide and how high it should be. So he's very specific in even to the measurement of how it needs to be done. Mm. And he says, make it out of pure gold and how the chirrups have to be, how many chirrups it has to be and how it needs to be placed. He's very, very specific. Mm. And this Ark of the Covenant, what did it carry? It, it, both the presence of God dwelled in the Ark of the Covenant. Bible says that, and the commandments, the Ten Commandments, the tablet was present in the Ark of the Covenant, and this, uh, and it was placed in the center in the courtyard. The holies. Yes, and which is the which is called the holies of the holies mm. place, right? And so this is how specific God is. Now I want you to think to that point and hold on to that point. Now. This same Ark of the Covenant, which was built during the Mos Moses' time, uh, during the time of David, it was supposed to be brought to the Kingdom of Israel. Yeah. So David, along with the uh, with, along with the chief priest's sons, carry the uh, you know uh, carry the Ark of the Covenant and bring it. And I want to uh, highlight what happened there. Okay, let's read Second Samuel chapter six, verses three to four, and then six to seven. And they carried the Ark of the Covenant, a new cart, and brought it to the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. So I want you to imagine how it was. It, you know, so the Ark of the Covenant was actually uh, placed near the hill. So there is a hill lord, there's an uphill travel that is there. Yeah. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the Ark of God, and Ahio went before the Ark. Yeah. And David and all the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines. That's in verse 5. We look into 6 and 7. When they came to the threshing floor of Nakon, Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God struck him down there because of his error. And he died beside the Ark of God. Okay, now this is the scenario of what happened when the Ark of the Co Ark of Covenant was carried, or, or the first attempt of carrying the Ark of the Covenant to the Kingdom of Israel. So much so, when Uzzah died, I think that event itself was cancelled. Okay. Imagine, because Uzzah tried touching the Ark of the Covenant because he thought it was stumbling, he fell, drop dead. Right. Right? Why did he drop dead? Because God is holiest of the holies and he cannot handle unholiness. Mm. That's again his one of the characteristic. If that is the case, I want to bring you to now to Mother Mary. 
I told you earlier that God is very specific. Hmm. If he's very specific about the Ark of the Covenant, imagine how much more specific he would be when he thought of Mother Mary, when she had to be conceived in the womb of her mother. Hmm. Okay? And if that is the case, so God carefully and specifically and detail-oriented about Mother Mary, her characteristics and everything. Now, I want you to bring to another point here. Let's talk about the example of Uzzah. Uzzah, just by touching the Ark of the Covenant, where the, just the Ten Commandments and the presence of God was there, he was propped dead. There is no way uh, Mother Mary could have conceived Jesus, carried her in the, carried Jesus in the womb for nine months if there was sin in place. She would be dropped dead. Then. There is no way she could do that. So that is why we believe, the church believes, that there is immaculate conception. She was conceived without the original sin. And she was kept pure and holy for this very purpose. That was the purpose in her life, to carry the uh, God himself, the second person in divinity. And that is why the church believes uh, she was immaculately conceived, and rightly so, because, like I said, at, when Mary was born, uh, into the world, Jesus was not in the picture. And we right now enjoy this beautiful grace of the passion of the cross and the Lamb of God and we can enter the holiest of the holies through the blood of Jesus. When Mary was conceived, that was not there. So how would she then hold this holiest of the holies in our world? It is there. It could not be possible if, if she was not immaculately conceived. Is that interesting? That's what we say in the Bible portion of what, what we heard now. Uh, it was a new cart. Mm-hmm. So new cart means uh, unused or no one used before and it was uh, pure. It was in one way holy. Mm-hmm. So in that way also, you know, Mary is about to carry Jesus Christ. So in God's plan, God knew that Mary would uh, carry Jesus Christ. Therefore, uh, Jesus, uh, God made her as a new cart mm-hmm. so that uh, Jesus can mm-hmm. donate her. And the chapter teaches us uh, that uh, this is the Immaculate Conception of Mary. Mm. So we, are, we being the Catholics, faithful Catholics, we have to believe that uh, the Conception of Mary was Immaculate. Praise Lord. So uh, I hope you all uh, enjoyed this session and this episode. We'll come back to you next time. Thank you so much. And God bless you. Thank you very much. And if you liked our video, um, and if you found it interesting, if you found something that has convicted your heart, that convicted your heart, I would encourage you. All of us here are encouraging you to share and subscribe. Subscribe the channel if you haven't done it, and share it with your friends and family so that they can be convicted as well. Because it's not us who convict; it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, so God bless you for all the effort that you do as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.